Hey guys, this is Kevin Smith Jr., your host for the Container Happy Hour. Grab a drink, join us every two weeks, and we'll talk containers and future of the market. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Lopez. How you doing, my friend? Hey, doing good, Kevin. Great to be on, man. I'm excited. I've seen a lot about the podcast and the videos, and um, it's a pleasure to be on with you. Thank you for doing this, man. I think this is going to be something really interesting for people to talk about the container home niche specifically, and then all the other stuff you're involved in. But yeah. uh, let's start. Let's start with a little toast. I got a blue hey. moon here with your name on it, buddy. Yeah, I got to turn this around, huh? There we go. There you go. There you go. Cheers. I know. I love. I love the way you do the show, man. With the drinks, it's fun. That's the way to keep it fun. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks. So uh, as, as the formality goes, this is episode 11 of the Container Happy Hour. You're the owner of Alternative Living Spaces, right? That's right. Yeah. So give us, give us a rundown of what that business is. And then if you want to transition into how you got into that. Okay, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, Alternative Living Spaces, uh, started the company about five years ago, and we specialize in shipping container conversions. Uh, but specifically, we've been focusing on the residential market. So we'll do um, tiny homes on wheels, uh, backyard units like ADUs, uh, backyard offices, backyard home gyms. Um, we haven't really gotten a lot into the industrial or even like commercial retail space. So really, our niche has been residential and um, kind of cool story on how we kind of how I stumbled into starting the company is um, I was in a season of life where I was just always thinking about business ideas and Growing up, I always wanted to be an architect, so I've always liked uh, design, construction, all of that. And um, man, I literally had like a notepad on my phone of probably like a hundred business ideas, and you know, some of them were terrible, some were actually <laughs> decent, you know. And um, I remember going to visit my dad one time. Uh, this was I'm now 32. This was when I was about 20, probably 25. And, uh, you know, I was visiting with my parents and I look in the backyard and uh, my dad had built a tree house in the backyard. I remember just checking it out and just thinking, uh, you know, how much did it cost you to build? How long did it take? And he told me that he built it for a thousand dollars. I remember just being honestly like in shock because uh, at the time my rent was a thousand dollars a month. I was working a lot. Like I just was thinking I was working two jobs at the time and um, not really making a lot of money, right? Like kind of going to rent, going to other expenses. And I would never be at home. I was a bachelor. So I was never spending time at home and just, just was really frustrated with the idea of like, man, I'm spending a thousand bucks a month on rent for a bed when I'm never really even home. And when he told me that he built the tree house for a thousand dollars, I was just like, man, something is not adding up here. Like <laughs> the fact that, you know, for, for some people, man, you may spend that thousand dollars for 40 years and never actually own anything, you know? And I'm like, man, there's right. gotta be a better way. There's gotta be, you know, I started thinking a lot about like housing prices. And I was like, it's interesting. Like I'm in Vegas and, and prices probably like a lot of places. I'm sure even where you guys are, right? They just continue to go up. And you know, in order to find a, a, a nice home, you know, you're looking at probably 250,000 and up to get something that's a nice home. And even if it's smaller, you know? And I just was just kind of mind blown that like, man, there's literally not even a real market for like the under 250,000 residential spaces. Like, sure, there's some condos or things like that. Um, but, the, but, the, but basically, like when it came to like tiny homes, like something that would be like luxurious, um, really cool, but a very small footprint and a much lower price point. Um, I didn't see that kind of in the market. And so I was certainly naive. You know, I, I, I've, I've since kind of ran into some learning curves of certain areas. It's just illegal. Some places you can put them, you know, all of that would be a different <laughs> topic. But at the time, it just seemed so black and white to me of like, man, this is a home run. Like we can make smaller homes and, you know, they're going to be everywhere. And so um, after kind of visiting with my parents, uh, at the time I was uh, doing a delivery job. So I was working for my uncle's furniture delivery business. And we did a delivery to a warehouse here in Vegas. It's a company called Idea Box. And they're a really cool company. Uh, it was a co-working space, but they took three shipping containers and converted them into office spaces. And they made them really modern, really clean. They were like, one was bright green, one was bright orange. They had one on top with a rooftop deck. It was like really sharp. 
And I remember dropping off some sofas there and just taking some pictures, trying to talk to them about, a little bit about what that was. And I just remember leaving that place thinking, man, container, it'd be really cool to do a container home. Like I saw it as an office. It was really nice. And I was like, it'd be really cool to do a home version of that. And so um, not long after, I finally had a day off of work and, um, you know, I was just kind of plugging away on Craigslist, trying to get an idea of how much containers cost. And sure enough, there was a guy that was converting a container uh, into a convention booth, but uh, it, his deal ended up falling through. So it was probably about a third of the way done. He did a lot of like the cutouts and reinforcements and it kind of looked like a home. It was going to be a little staged restaurant. Um, and so I reached out to him. I went and checked it out. And uh, he was asking 3,900 bucks for it. I felt like it was too much money. Now I would pay more than that in a heartbeat for that. <laughs> and now that's just the box, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Barely. Right? Crazy. Um, and so literally uh, left that meeting thinking to myself, nah, this is a little bit too much. My bank account <laughs> at the time, that was everything I had. It was 3,900 bucks, right? And um, I tried to offer him like 34. He didn't take it. So I leave. He calls me back like probably three hours later. He's like, hey, there's someone coming. He's going to he's gonna buy it for 3700 And the guy was like, but I like what you wanted to do with it. I'll sell it to you if you come back with 3900 And uh, man, I didn't share some of the backstory details on this, Kevin, but this is crazy. The night before that, my mom has never done this in my life, but she just gave me 500 bucks in an envelope and was just like, I feel like I should give you this, right? Never in my life. So that 500 bucks gave me enough money to get, get the container, get a delivery truck. I shipped it to my parents' house because I lived in an apartment, put it on their driveway. And I told them in three months, I'll have it out. And then months later, I finished it. And uh, we ended up making a YouTube video of it and whatnot. And um, that's basically how the business got started. That's amazing. That's it was amazing. Fun. So. So mom's well, the real winner in this whole story, though. She is. She let me use the driveway, gave me that that little push to get over the, that first hump, man. So it was, it was cool. That's really cool, man. And you, you're you still in Vegas, right? The business yep. is still centered in Vegas? That's right. Yeah. Still in and Vegas. And that's a, that's a pretty progressive market as far as, you know, interest in containers and feasibility yeah. of using them, right? Absolutely. So, like, we have some pretty cool container projects even here in town. So uh, there's one called Container Park. Yep. It was a project done in downtown Las Vegas with, I don't know, maybe 100 containers. I mean, it's, it's really big. So, yeah, so it's people an are impressive familiar project. With the yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty sharp. So how talk to us a little bit about all the different things you're into now. So we're fast forward five years and you're not building one off units in your parents' driveway at this point. Yeah. And and you're doing all these different diversifications from offices to gyms to homes and all these things. So tell us kind of that rundown and, and how you continue expanding the product line. Yeah. So um, initially, our product line was really strictly container tiny homes. And so it had been like 20 foot and 40 foot shipping container conversions. Um, and a lot of our early clients was a lot of Airbnb rentals. So people in like Zion or Joshua Tree, Moab, Utah. A lot of these national park locations where it's a lot more rural, uh, it's a lot more open to, you know, having a container home on your property. And, um, and you know, since then, like last summer with COVID and everything going on, we just said, man, there's definitely a demand in the residential um, office space. And so we've started to shift and do more container offices that could be used as, you know, temporary construction offices or things like that. But they also can be used as residential backyard offices. Um, and then we started doing gym, uh, gym containers for home residents with all the gym shut down. We started kind of marketing those. Um, and so we've had some pretty cool projects. We did one here in Vegas. Uh, we just basically combined two 20 foot containers and, uh, it's a pretty neat project. It's hard to kind of explain, but they, they, they already had a lot of gym equipment. They're, they're former, uh, they did a lot of basically like triathlons and things like that. So they had a bunch of cool equipment. They decked it out. Um, and then it's cool. My cousin, uh, his name's Braden. He worked with me as kind of like a project manager for about a year and a half. Now he's a fireman, but he just launched the container gym business. So it's been cool to kind of like help him get on his feet. So we did his first gym container together. Um, his company is called, called Furyco, F 
R Y C O. And uh, yeah, so we've been doing the gyms, offices, the homes. We're doing kind of probably the biggest home we've done so far, which is still a smaller home, relatively speaking, but it's three 40 foot containers combined. So we're doing that right now in Joshua Tree. Um, and that, that should be a really cool project. Um, we also partner with someone doing container pools. So like for this home we're doing, it's kind of like an H, kind of got like one, two, three, 40 foot containers all combined. Then we got a pool in the middle, so a 20 foot container pool. And then the middle 40 foot containers got a rooftop deck on, on it. So definitely like trying to get creative and making them really cool. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. That's amazing. That's amazing. I think there's so many people in our space that are very, very intrigued with the home idea, the pool idea, all of these, these niche pieces yeah. um, and seeing, seeing the stuff you guys are doing. It's amazing. Like it's, it's really, really clean work. It's really nice work. So I think you're just starting to scratch the surface of what you guys are probably going to do in this space. I appreciate it. Cool. Yeah. We definitely learned a lot, you know, I mean, we've definitely earned our scars, so to speak, right. We've made our mistakes, <laughs> we've made, you know, how to move a container, what materials to use on the inside. I mean, all that kind of stuff. And I feel like we are turning a corner right now and it's been, it's been good. You know, we really have our designs down pretty well, which is cool. That's good. Now, what about the, you know, the world is kind of in chaos right now as it relates to logistics and supply chains and not only containers are higher priced than maybe your, your original business model. They're, less availability, right? So that has to create a little bit of a challenge for you. And what about just regular building components? I mean, lumber is more expensive. The, the whole overall supply chain of getting materials is a little bit delayed. How have you guys kind of counteracted some of those challenges? Yeah, no, you're right. It's been, it's definitely been a tough, uh, you know, it's definitely been tough. So um, for us, you know, most of the containers we use, we're typically using like one trip high cubes. That's just kind of what we've decided. So most of our builds are produced with those. And those right now are just super hard to come by. I mean, so like anytime we need to start sourcing containers, it usually looks like making 25 different phone calls to any vendor in the area or different people at the port just to try to find them. And then if we do find them and they're reasonably priced, which means like 50% more than what we used to pay, <laughs> right. and then literally it's like, man, let's try to get a couple of them or two or three or four. You know, we're not a huge operation. So for us, if we could have, a few extra 20 footers or a few extra 40 footers in the background for upcoming builds. It gives us that cushion. You know, once we start digging into those, you know, we have probably four weeks before we would need to get more in. And so we've been trying to just stockpile on materials. I know, you know, one of the products we use, which is kind of cool, is InsoFast, which you're probably familiar with, the corrugated foam panels. It has the framing. And I guess what's nice is while steel has gone up like crazy, and wood has gone up like crazy, the foam hasn't gone up to the same degree, you know? So, so our costs on what we use for, for some of our builds for like the, the infrastructure, the rough in is, is not gone up too bad. Um, I mean, it is tough. Like the three forty footers we're doing right now, uh, the steel is kind of like, man, maybe it's doubled, you know? So it's, oh, we sure. have a ton of steel for reinforcements that's being required by the engineers. And I tried calling them and saying, man, this seems way excessive in certain parts. Could we do something else? And they're like, well, if you want to change the window sizes and I'm like, we can't do that. So yeah. Then we changed the whole aesthetic and then it's not the unique piece that it was. Right. Yeah. So it's been, it's been, it's definitely been a challenge, but thankfully we've been able to like order some stuff in advance and we've tried standardizing our models more. So we have the same window sizes, same door sizes. So we could start kind of bulk ordering more of those materials too. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you, you just have to be so flexible in today's market, right? And 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 I think uh, I think be really upfront and transparent with the client, right? And and yeah. we have to say basically every day we have to be honest with them and say, this is all the things that we need for your build. These things we really aren't sure how long they're going to take to get. Mm -hmm. And and um, I think people respect that more than we say we make a hard deadline promise and then have to go back on it. That's, right. smart. that's good advice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. We've so been, that's like, I know for us specifically, it's been the doors and windows have been tough. So yes. I had to update clients it's like, Hey, if you're doing a custom door or window, I mean, we're looking at like 10 week turnaround time. So yeah, you know, let's get that order in. Right. Mm -hmm. That's priority for sure. So another thing that really interests me and, and this is some, some personal experience and I'm very curious how you guys go about this. Yeah. How successful have you been with financing as it relates to a container home? 
Yeah, it's a really good question. So uh, we've seen a few different options here. So definitely have some good stuff to share. So like if someone's looking to do something um, that is more of a non-permitted unit, you know, they have a big property they're going to put in their backyard. It's technically like a temporary structure. Typically, that'll be something that you kind of have to use a personal loan or something along those lines because you don't have a title. It's not real property as far as like a permanent structure. Um, and for, for those types of bills, we have used Lightstream. So it's just L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M.com. And they've been pretty good. They've been helpful for loans up to like probably $35,000. If you have good credit, I think that could be a good option. Um, but we've also pivoted and we started doing container tiny homes on wheels. And that's opened up some pretty good doors. So we'll take like a 20 foot container. Um, we'll have a trailer manufactured that's designed for the container. It gets mounted to it. And then we work with a third party RV inspector. Um, so we basically submit our plans to him. He comes and does his inspections. And it's essentially just a tiny home on wheels, like, like the wood, the stick built ones are, but just with a container. And what's been good about that is because it's classified as an RV, it then does open up more doors for financing as well as for insurance. So like if you if you wanted to use a unit as an Airbnb rental and God forbid there's a fire in your area, right? Um, your unit can actually be insured, which is cool. So so we use, there's two companies that are, that are helpful for that. One of them is Liberty Bank of Utah. Um, they have a program for tiny home financing where typically they require like 20% down. And then uh, I think it's called 21st Mortgage. It's a Berkshire Hathaway company, and they're open to doing park model RVs, which is basically if you get a tiny home and you just make it a little bit oversized. Um, so there's some creative ways you can do that, and you, you would be classified as a park model. Um, and they actually offer, um, I think it's 10% down, and they have some pretty good competitive rates. And then they also do modular as well. So if you do like a permitted structure that's going to be a home, they've been cool to work with also. That's that's tremendous. And I, I think that's one of the biggest hurdles a lot of potential buyers face mm -hmm. is they're they're intimidated that their normal financing options through their their local bank aren't available. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so that's tremendous. If you guys have kind of solved that riddle for your clients, I think you're you're in the driver's seat in that regard. So that that's yeah. really impressive, man. It's been cool. Yeah, it's certainly something we 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 do need to grow in more. Like I'd say for us, our two biggest barriers with like the residential uh, products has been where can I put it and how can I afford it? Uh, where can I put it? Of course, is zoning permitting all that, and then how can I afford it? We've made it's come a long ways, um, but I would say it's still it's funny because if you get a regular RV, like you can go in the day of to an RV dealership and like certainly by the next day find out like you're approved, you know. Whereas this method, it still is several weeks and it takes time. Yeah. Um, but I am confident that like, you know, I've seen the tiny home industry. I mean, obviously it's growing so much. People are becoming more familiar with these to where I'm sure in the next year or two, there'll be a lot better options also. Yeah. And is there a, is there a plan in place long term where alternative offers some in-house financing? That's a great question, man. I would love to. You know, that would be really cool. That's something yeah. I'd look into more. You know, I know my cousin's yeah. trying to do it on the gym. So I'm like, man. We gotta find the right partnerships for that. That'd be cool. Exactly. Yeah. Just just a little bit of capital, no big deal, right? That's great, man. I know, <laughs> I know with the container pools, I think that's what Mod Pools does. You know, they do the shipping container pools. I think they have some pretty cool in-house fi in financing options. Yeah, that's a big play. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned you mentioned zoning and permitting, and and those are other big buzzwords, right? That yeah. that are starting to become more and more to the forefront. So, yeah. how have you seen that kind of change in your time in the industry? or even something that you look ahead and say, there's still a growth curve where we have to kind of find our way through some of these items. Yeah, so I think the biggest challenge early on wasn't actually so much that we were using a container, although that does pose its own challenges. It was really the footprint of the container. So I think what drew me to the uh, was, hey, they're already 160 square feet, 320 square feet. They're kind of a really cool, already self-contained footprint it's perfect for smaller housing. And so um, what I didn't know at the time was that, you know, in a lot of cities, there is minimum square footage requirements. So like here in Vegas, uh, like early on, we'd have a lot of clients that said, hey, you know, I have this property down the road, you know, or, or somewhere in Vegas. I'd love to do a container home. I want to do a 40 foot container. And I didn't know better, you know, so I call the building department and I'm talking to them. And I come to find out that, you know, in Vegas, the minimum square footage requirement for a home is actually 900 square feet. 
So, so I think some of these zoning regulations do make smaller housing uh, certainly a challenge. But on the flip side, it has been really cool to see the progress that's taken place even within that space. So, you know, I really look at like California as a great example where because of, you know, the population there and the cost of living, they really have been forced to try to figure out this problem and try to figure out how to have more affordable housing. And so, you know, as, as most people may already know, like they've greenlit, you know, ADUs, additional dwelling units, which are basically backyard homes, you know, throughout the state. Um, and they are now trying to make even the process as a builder simpler. So they, they've, they've done something I believe is called Appendix Q, where now instead of having to go county by county, you can start to make your design a little bit more statewide and, and be able to get, get approvals that way. Um, I was talking to a guy that does a lot of ADU stuff there earlier this week, and he was saying also they now are trying to do the set it up to where you can have the pre-approved plans for a county um, to where someone can come in. And it'd be literally like a one day permitting process to get you approved. So they're really trying to like wow. make all this stuff more streamlined instead of there being so many hurdles. Um, and I think it's still, it's kind of more theory than practice probably right now. Like it's like, Hey, we want to do all this. Um, and I know kind of friends that are in the trenches that it's like, man, it's still taking time or things are still, <laughs> but it's cool to see like the top down is like implementing some level of like, Hey, we need smaller houses like LA now allows tiny homes as ADUs in like downtown LA area. Um, San Diego is adopting something similar. San Francisco looks like they're going to be adopting a lot of places in central California have. So we're on the West coast. So that's kind of what I'm familiar with, but it's been cool to see people um, adopting more smaller housing options, which, which definitely opens up the market for us. And, you know, you see these big companies or, or companies that maybe have large ambitions like a boxable, or, or companies like that that are thinking, oh man, this is going to be a huge market. Um, and I know uh, it sounds like in, in other parts of the country, though, maybe some of these issues just weren't pre existing, which is great. You know, like we have a guy we work with in Mississippi. He's building a container home uh, right now for himself. And it's been like a one day permitting process. They've approved things very simply. So I know it depends on where you're located, too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's obviously, I can't speak to every state in the union, but, uh, it's been our experience that they they vary dramatically state to state. And while that's one of the challenges, it's also one of the really, really cool benefits if you operate in certain states. You're right. right. Absolutely. But I, I am proud of the state of California because they seem to be at the forefront of standardizing this movement yeah. and and creating that statewide issue is is monumental because we've mm -hmm. seen that here where just county to county or even, you know, smaller municipalities next to each other, and there's no standard features, right? Yeah. Uh, some of them go by this code, some of them go by this code, some of them want this kind of spray foam, even down to the nuance of material, right? So I'm sure you've lived yeah. some of that already. Yeah, no, you're right. It's definitely a learning curve each time. So if there could be more standardization, man, that, that helps all of us, you know, at least on the building side, you know, then we can have, this is our, our plan, we run with it, you know. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So what's the what's the big vision? Where's the where's the five year, 10 year vision for alternative? I mean, where where do you think this goes? Yes. So my biggest passion, honestly, really is the topic of affordable housing. But it's also a little bit of a twist on it. I think if there's one thing that I'm very passionate about, it's like luxury, smaller, affordable housing. So my 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 pitch would be like, I can't say I'm the guy that's going to say, hey, I'm going to you know, build the cheapest, smallest homes, and that's going to be a solution to, you know, to poverty, right? But I'm thinking like, man, I, I guess I'm I'm trying to like create a product for the me of 10 years ago, you know, right. who was a younger right. guy that was definitely in, into design, wanted something cool, and uh, was very open to living in something smaller and would have loved to have owned something, you know, instead of paying rent for 10 years, Man, it would have been great to own something, even if it was it was a hundred thousand dollars, you know. But it's a it's a small unit and it's uh, technically a home, so I, at least I'm paying towards something. So that when I'm thirty, you know, and I, and I want to transition to a bigger home because maybe I'm having a family, you know, I have an asset, you know. So so I think that's kind of like my target audience and definitely like the dream that like the things that excite me, get me out of bed is like I would love to see smaller home communities and even in Vegas, like there's track homes everywhere. And it would be incredible to even have developments that are 
you know, small home communities, whether they're on permanent foundations or it's tiny homes on wheels. Um, I know like, I feel like there really is a demand and a desire for like community within people that are in their early twenties that if there was, if we created something and I, the first person to do it in Vegas, they're going to win big. I already know it. Right. <laughs> first person that can get a property, make it a tiny home community, give it a really cool vibe, you know, awesome string lights everywhere, container pool, gym, like make it really cool. And it could be not just containers, but incorporating just unique designs. Um, I feel like, like, uh, that's there's a need out there, for that, you know, and people want that. So they, they, there is a community in Vegas that they did do that. It's like a Zappos tiny home community downtown. Right. And a great job, you know, so I think more stuff like that would be really cool. Well, you say it like you don't know who's going to do it. I mean, I'm just assuming you're going to be the one that does that, right? I would love to. I would absolutely. <laughs> love to, man. I, I, I honestly, it'd be, it'd be great. I think for me, if I'm honest, like what my strengths and like my wheelhouse is, is really going to be on the production side of the containers. And I don't, man, I, I, I can't say I'm the sharpest guy when it comes to real estate development, all that <laughs> kind of stuff. So we have a few people we're talking to. So hopefully sooner than later, it'd be, it'd be awesome to be part of that. Yeah. I got a feeling that's going to happen at some point. Uh, I'd love it, man. It'd be cool. So we, uh, you know, we have to just say this and, and I'm going to give a quick shout out to my man, Reese, um, our newest sales guy actually for EMS is from Vegas as well. Wow. And, uh, so we, we've got that little tie in and actually one of his, if he hits his goals this year, one of his perks is that we're going to take a little trip to Vegas, back to Vegas. So, oh, so you better be cheering Reese on so we can come see you. Yes. You guys got to come out. It'd be great to hang out in Vegas. There's a lot of fun stuff to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, have you seen things kind of resuming some normalcy? Does it, does it, it feel a little better there? It does. I, if I'm honest, it feels like it's back. It it's probably feels like at 85% in Vegas. You know what I mean? Like it, it really feels like roads are busy again. You're driving down the road and everyone's out doing something. So it feels really good. I'm, I'm happy. That's good. That, that, that energy is necessary in a place like Vegas, right? Uh, yeah. It's been, I know it was really tough here with all the casinos. We got hit pretty hard just because that's a lot of the jobs in Vegas. And I'd say over the last six months, it's just kind of progressively, they're bringing more people back in. And uh, it's good to see that, you know, I like, it. I like to hear it, man. One of my favorite cities. It's been cool. So, so I have to, uh, I have to put you on the spot a little bit and yeah. you're, you're obviously very comfortable knowing that this is a recording and, you know, posing for the questions and all that. Right. Yeah. So the rumor mill is that there's a show featuring you and your company very soon oh man yeah so it's exciting so we can't let all the details out of the bag yet but, but it, it does, is true oh, it is true yeah so we're gonna be okay. we actually start filming on tuesday and there isn't guarantees but if everything goes smooth uh there's no reason why it shouldn't continue into a full season so we do episode one starts on tuesday uh we'll be filming probably It'll be like five shoot days over the course of about eight weeks. Um, right. And then if everything goes smooth, it should turn into um, a full season. And uh, the show is going to definitely be challenging me as a builder because <laughs> like we love containers, but we want to do other stuff as well. So I'm like, all right, you know, me, me and my wife are actually doing a van conversion right now. So I'm like, okay, good. I'm getting my hands wet in some other areas because <laughs> they, I know they want to do some buses or something else too. So I'm like, y'all going to stress me out for sure but it'll be really fun <laughs> well congratulations on that and Thank when you. when and where can people kind of catch updates or learn more when it's going to be available yeah so i'd recommend probably instagram is probably going to be the place where we'll have the most content on there um just okay. kind of updating people also you know definitely the website um but it's just uh, our handle is alternative living spaces and same for the website Okay, perfect. Perfect. Well, we'll uh, obviously you'll keep me in the loop and we'll share it on our page too. So everyone that follows at EMS LLC, we'll get it on that too. So uh, uh, where, where do you, where do you see the container home market going worldwide? I mean, do you, do you see this something that, that you can be a part of as it grows internationally? Do you see it as a thing where, you know, you're, you're pioneering a space in a smaller market that could lead to some, cons some consulting anywhere. I, I mean, is that, is that part of this? I think so. Yeah. I'm really excited. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I was just driving. Uh, so me and my wife, we just got a little puppy 
So we went and picked it up two weeks ago up in uh, Salt Lake City. And so we were driving through Salt Lake City. And uh, sure enough, you know, we're exiting the freeway and off to the right. I'm like, man, are those containers? And literally they're building this project out there. You may have seen it online, but it's it's a kind of like a, a affordable housing, uh, 40 foot containers. But it's like six stories tall. It's like 100 containers combined. Um, it's these guys. I think it's called Ecofab Box that are that are producing them. But I remember just being in awe. And I think it might be the biggest housing complex out of containers so far in the U.S. I could be wrong, but it was massive. And it we just got fact me. check. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. It got me thinking uh, of just the reality of like, man, the beautiful thing I think with the containers, like you know, is like, man, they're so easy. Or, or they're they're very. It's very possible to relocate, transport, move them. So internationally, it's, it only makes sense that I think as it grows here in the U.S. more, I know there's a lot of countries that are probably using them even a lot more than us. Um, and we're probably still catching up to a lot of those guys. But I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see um, containers used for housing globally a lot more. And like you said, probably opportunity for us to do some really cool stuff here in the U.S. and have someone in Australia say, hey, we want we want to do something like that, you know. So I think the opportunity is there for sure. Well, I, I think you're in the right space and I think you you guys have a, a vision and a plan. And, and I'll just reiterate this for everybody that the work is so clean. You know, everything you guys are doing is so clean. It's so nice. The finishes, the the aesthetic factor. So, I mean, sky's the limit. I'm just glad we we know you and we'll get to watch the ride, man. Oh, man, Kevin, I appreciate it, man. It's been a pleasure getting to know you more. I was telling telling Kevin before the interview that uh, I definitely need to do an interview of you. So I uh. want to <laughs> man, hear your story. Uh, you guys are just honestly at a whole other level. Like I, we, we, my lead builder, his name's Cameron. Uh, he uh, started following you guys on Instagram. And uh, so shout out to whoever's managing your, your Instagram because they're doing a good job. They're getting a lot of content out. And uh, sure enough, I started checking you guys out. And man, you guys are always having new products and new things you guys are you guys are showing. And it's it's really exciting. It's cool. Well, thank you for that, and thank you to Cameron for for following us. And uh, yeah. and I'll I'll say we we do it in house, and I'll I'll give the props to Neil D. Um, Neil does our social. He also does the the edits on this show. He produces the show, everything. So um, Neil Neil makes us look really really good to the world at large, right? So I'll yeah. I'll keep it going, man. That's cool. Um, but but I can't thank you enough, dude. This is this is cool stuff. This is great content for people, and I hope everyone watches this because you you really dropped some some great information for everyone. Right on. I appreciate it, man. It was a pleasure. I love love talking about this topic. So anytime, I'm always down to talk about containers. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Cheers to you, man. Hey, cheers, cheers to all your success. All right, all right. Thanks, See you, man. brother.